so much uh, for having us here. Uh, the Flutterwave team is uh, in attendance today. And um, it's great to be part of this ecosystem. I mean, looking at all the other panels and hearing from other people speak about what we're all trying to do. Um, essentially, we're really all trying to just uh, improve the lives of people in our, in our different ways. And so within this session, we're hoping to you know, share a little bit more about how Flutterwave is uh, partnering with different uh, companies out there, and in this case, uh, the Hashgraph Association and Hedera, to uh, in improve the, uh, the, the lives of uh, people and merchants. So with merchant solutions and uh, individual solutions. Um, and throughout this, you'll see a theme that's going to play out, and I think it's been mentioned in panels be before today and yesterday. It's really about partnerships and innovation. So uh, that's the only way that we're going to continue to scale and to grow. Um, and so throughout this presentation, I'm hoping that we can have three takeaways that we'll all walk away with. And so these three takeaways, number one, uh, I'll go through the Flutterway story. It's been told, but I'm going to be telling it um, hopefully a little bit differently. And a lot has changed. There's a lot, been a lot of announcements in the, la in the last few weeks. And uh, you might be confused about all the different products that's been going on. You might have heard of tuition. You might have heard of swap, all of these different products. How does it all fit in? So I'll try and uh, put that all together for you so you can walk away knowing uh, a little bit more about what the Flutterwave story looks like now, updated. Um, I'll talk about the opportunity. The other part of the opportunity is also about the problem. So the problem we're trying to fix and, of course, the solution that we have through the partnership with the Hashgraph Association and with Hedera, so we'll, we'll jump in very quickly then. Okay. So the Flutterwave story, very quickly and briefly. So the mission, uh, some people don't know this, but our mission is to uh, simplify payments for endless possibilities. So when you talk about simplify payments, uh, similar to what's been mentioned um, earlier today, it's really about meeting people where they are so changing behavior is obviously very, very difficult. If you want people to use a certain product for um, any reason, if you want to help them, you need to think about what their specific use cases, what the problem is, and meeting them exactly where they are. So I've been uh, fortunate to live in a, a couple of different countries, so South Africa, I lived in China, US, and now in Canada. And so there's different payment options and different payment behaviors that you notice all over the place. And within Africa, it's no different. People have different payment behaviors, and we have to uh, be cognizant of that with the solutions that we create. All right, so Flutterwave at a glance. So essentially, uh, we've been doing a lot of work, and uh, to round it all up in where we are today, uh, $25 billion in total payment volume, uh, 600,000 transactions and uh, tw 20 million API calls per day and growing, uh, 700 employees and growing. Um, so things are, uh, are going pretty well. Uh, we've got a million merchants that we've served so far, uh, some of which you would have heard of, uh, likes of Microsoft, which we announced earlier this year, uh, Uber, Netflix, and from my purview uh, within North America, these are the kind of merchants that we're trying to work with and really roll out the red carpet for them to operate Within, uh, within the continent. And of course, our investment partners are also um, strategic partners because they help us open up doors to different opportunities um, around the world. So really, we're trying to be the payment infrastructure for merchants, large, small, um, across the world and in Africa. Okay, and so in terms of our products and uh, services and where we are right now, uh, jump one too far. So, in terms of our coverage, uh, obviously we're in 32 countries now. Um, we continue to collect the licenses. Uh, you might have heard uh, announcements about what, uh, new licenses we had in Rwanda, in Egypt, etc. And so we try and give a, as much scope to our uh, merchants as possible and help them, as I said, roll out the red carpet into the continent. And so out of the countries that we work in, it includes um, about 11 key markets, which account for about 50% of the population, 70% of Africa's GDP. So those are the key countries that we try to focus on. This is where our customers want to be. And in terms of payment types, we have a plethora of payment types. Of course, your MTNs and your Airtels and everything else um, that we offer through different channels. And so we want to be a one-stop shop for merchants that want to collect or pay out money 
across the, across the continent. And then, in terms of our products and services, so with all the announcements, you might be thinking, where does it all fit in? So if you think about it from the point of uh, merchants and individuals, these are the services that we have. So for merchants, global enterprises, all the way up to small enterprises, we have Flutterway for Business. And then for individuals, those in Africa, we have uh, Flutterway for Consumer. So we have, you might have heard of Barter, which we're revamping uh, at the moment. And then Swap was a recent um, announcement that we made. So people in Nigeria who want to have, uh, want to change their Naira into USD, we have a solution for that. And of course for uh, tuition. So if you want to pay school fees all over the world, we can do that through tuition. For the diaspora, meaning the people out there who are trying to send money in, we now have the Send app. And so I'm gonna drill down more into remittances, which is the opportunity. That, um, that has led to this solution that we've created. And so we try and meet everyone where they are. Um, and, and this is why, this is where we stand right now. And of course, this continues to be developed as we, as we continue to grow. And so all these capabilities that we're building together, all these products and services are in pursuit of a $5.6 trillion opportunity in Africa. So we're trying to make Africa feel more like a country, even though it isn't. It's different, every country is different, but we're trying to do the hard work laying the foundation so that for our merchants, it feels like it's all one, it's all together. And, um, and this is where um, the opportunity comes. Okay, so in terms of the opportunity here, I think the fact that we're all sitting here, no one needs to be convinced about Africa, but from our purview, of course, in uh, in North America, this is, these are the sort of mega trends that everyone sees, that everyone loves, and what everyone is trying to chase, right? So the population growth, the urbanization, um, these stats are all sort of driving uh, the interest in, in Africa. Uh, rising wealth, um, and of course, remittances is where we're going to double down, because of course at this point in time, it's all about revenues, it's all about being focused, on where the problems lie and being very sort of razor sharp on delivering revenues. I mean, we've had uh, panels here talking about sort of the fundamentals that really make sense. And so to give you an idea of just some of the things that we've looked at that have driven us to create the solution that I'm going to be mentioning, here are some stats um, around remittances that are really important for us to consider. Stats that we've considered very highly in terms of um, the products we create for our customers. So Africa is two of the top 10 remittance corridors globally. So Egypt and Nigeria, it's about 50 billion a year. And so that was uh, back in 2020. And if you look uh, even in 2022, it's grown. So those two countries are obviously a focus for us, but there are many more, of course, um, that are important, uh, important countries. However, this for us gave us the idea that look, there is money moving. Let's meet people where they are, like I said. Um, and if there's money move, moving, we want to be part of that process. Um, so uh, back in uh, 2005, you can see that there was a, a jump. Um, and this is people that are sending money back. Uh, some of you who may live in uh, North America, you might be sending money back for uh, people to use for you know, school fees or whatever, or some of you might be building a house. You know? um, and so, these are the kind of things that we're trying to facilitate. We'll facilitate that the money gets there, whether or not the house that you think is being built will be there when you come and visit is another question. <laughs> but um, the money is moving in this direction, and so we've seen that. Uh, of course, Nigeria is big, but uh, other, other countries uh, continue to be important. Um, reasons that it's being sent, of course, we know that um, it's about support. And in terms of GDP, in some countries you have uh, remittances being a significant percentage of their GDP. Uh, Sudan, of course, Lesotho, these countries. And so we don't ignore those. So even though uh, just from a um, scale perspective they might not be the biggest, we still look at getting to those at some point and uh, providing solutions. And on the flip side of that, we also look at the costs. And just the fact that we are at, you know, one of the highest, most expensive places to send money uh, globally, just looking at the global average. 
um, this is a clear opportunity for us to do something. And this is where you want to provide solutions, where there's a clear demand and a high cost. It's an obvious place where we need to uh, do something as Flutterwave. And so uh, getting to the solution that we've uh, developed, again, that theme of partnership and innovation is all throughout our, our, the solution that we've come up with. And so what we're doing here is working with the Hashgraph Association and Hedera, which is a distributed ledger technology um, where we're going to have wallets, um, USD, USDC wallets, and helping merchants to then offboard, be an off-ramp into mobile wallets all across Africa um, in, um, in fiat currency. And so um, Hedera has been a great partner of ours, and we continue to uh, create new products with them, and we're excited that um, in the next couple of months we should be seeing use cases pop out of this partnership. And just to give everyone a high level view of what things will look like, um, this is the, the less sexy, but this is the architecture that we're gonna be uh, using to build this, uh, this, to build this solution. Um, at the front end, of course, this Flutterway for Business, our product, uh, KYC, uh, proof of reserves, and FX are gonna be very important for that. Um, of course, we're gonna be dealing with custodial wallets, and in, in, in the future, we'll also look at non-custodial wallets as well. Uh, we're working with, a diff with different partners and continue to uh, add more partners to, to create the solution. Right now, Circle is, is one of them for the USDC wallets. Um, of course, we're also thinking about the uh, CBDCs. So, you know, eNaira and uh, ECD that we've heard about are very exciting for us. And at some point, we look to having functionality to support that as well. Um, and so that's, uh, of course, very important. And then, of course, um, Hedera will be the infrastructure that we build all of this on top of. Uh, we're going to go in different phases as well. So um, in phase one, we'll be looking at uh, USDC payouts um, into fiat currency. So we're going to have you know, USDC wallets on Hedera paying out into fiat currency, whether that's going to be your MTN wallet or your Airtel wallet. Um, that'll be the first phase. Uh, we're going to add in some of the functionality that we have within Flutterway for Business, allowing you to change this USDC to all the different currencies that we currently have within Flutterway for Business. So we're using new technology and new functionality with existing functionalities that we have to drive uh, even more value for our customers. Um, in phase two, we'll be looking at USDC collections, so allowing a merchant to collect uh, USDC from their customers will be the next thing that we'll be looking at. So that'll be probably uh, towards the, the end of, of next year. But in the first phase, we're looking to get this out in the next quarter or two. So we're uh, extremely excited uh, by that. Okay, and ultimately what we're trying to do here is really change the way that the world does business uh, with the continent. Uh, this is something we're excited about. This is why we uh, we come to these conferences to meet other partners because we need to, again, continue to help the ecosystem, continue to partner with different uh, players out there to drive value for, for our customers. And uh, we'll be here uh, till the end of the, the session, of course, and we're looking to meet uh, in ma many more players here. Um, and uh, as we continue to go into um, the next year, hopefully we can meet uh, more of you guys and, and, and continue the partnership and continue to grow the ecosystem to develop um, and, and help customers individually and merchants as well. So appreciate that. Thank you.